This conference will now be recorded. Mary Benton? Here. Lloyd Colston? Here. Joni Curl? Here. Carla Gallegos? Paisley Howerton? Charles Jennings? Ian Kuhn? Present. Andy Patton? Here. And Cody Richardson? That is a core. Okay, thank you, Josh. Uh, at this time, the planning commission members are asked to make a declaration of any conflict of interest or of any ex parte or outside communication that might influence their ability to hear all sides on any item on the agenda so they might come to a fair decision. Do they have any comments on that? Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. In the fact, we've only got our meeting minutes for the June 8th, 2021 meeting. Anybody see anything that needed to be changed in that? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes from the June 8th, 2021 meeting. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, them sign. Okay. Public hearings. Uh, I will entertain a motion to enter a public hearing. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Public here, Josh. I'll hand it over to you. All right. This first request. <laughs> the first request is for eleven ten East. I'm sorry. Yeah, eleven ten East Kansas. Um, right now, the property is zoned mixed use MU, um, but they're wanting to rezone it through C3 General Commercial District. I proposed use on that is um, a travel center or a truck stop, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be at the corner if you want to go into So, this request is that it's still owned by the city, so it's kind of a joint request between the city of our city and uh, K lands. Uh, the subject property, of course, is 1110 East Kansas. Surrounding area is commercial and agricultural lands. Uh, there is also there's commercial to the south. Um, that clinic, Coon uh, Mechanical, is also down in that area. Uh, the city's, like I said, is still the owner of the property. Um, the city has a proposal to transfer about 12 acres, more or less, to K lands venture. Uh, this property was originally annexed in 2007, and at that time it was an R1 residential single family district. Of course, I had rezoned to mixed use when we redid our zoning in 2014. Uh, it appears that it's always been an agricultural use. Uh, I believe this was part of a, it was related to floodplain buyouts, that's how the city got a hold of it. So, uh, one of the things we're going to look at is whether or not it's compatible with the comprehensive plan. And normally it would load the map, but it's not for some reason. Um, this, there we go. It's just being funny. I don't know what the deal is. The area around this is mostly mixed use according to the future land use plan and the comprehensive plan. Uh, to the south, there is some commercial and some industrial. I think this changed to the, this is the zoning map. Uh, it's popping up there. There is commercial off to the west, and of course, if you go across the road, which I actually see public. To the east, um, part of that is designated as agriculture, and part of it is outside city limits and was not part of our growth area um, when we did the, the comprehensive plan. Um, as far as other things about the comprehensive plan, the compatibility with it, uh, one of the things that I noted when I was looking through it is it would sort of fulfill one of the goals in Chapter 4 to attract new industries that complement the economy and utilize the labor force. Uh, while this particular project is not going to be a major employer, it does support a major employer. Um, Creekstone has a lot of problems. I'm sure if you've been to the north side of town, whenever the plant is open and operating, 
there are trucks parked everywhere along the roads up there. This would help um, alleviate some of the problems that they, they have up at Creekstone. Uh, that's kind of the, the thinking anyway. The, and the other goal it kind of talks about is retaining existing businesses and supporting the expansion. Um, again, this is a new project, but it would uh, support uh, Creekstone's ongoing expansion. Um, they have increased the number of trucks that, they, that is going in and out of that plant over the past several years. So that's one of those things that I believe that this sort of project could help. Um, the compatibility with the zoning ordinance. Um, it is agricultural and commercial already. Uh, when we did the zoning in 2014, we really had no idea what this area was going to be used for. Um, so that's kind of why we used mixed use, because that's, that's a mix of both worlds. Um, the, the one compounding factor that makes a project in this area difficult is the floodplain. However, that was overcome by this developer. Um, the city and the developer kind of jointly combined to request a conditional letter of map vision based on fill. That's a mouthful, but that is the FEMA form. Um, basically, what they have to do is they, they submitted a plan that showed what the project was going to be, the elevation, this grading plan, all that sort of stuff. And of course, they kind of go through federal review, so they had to prove what's going to affect it wildlife, weather, all those sorts of things. So they've been through that whole process there. Um, but they were able to get that. And the way it works is it's conditional right now. And when the project is complete, they have to have it resurveyed to prove that it actually met the intent of the um, vision that they set forth. So they're going to fill and raise and levels fill. Is that what you're talking about? They they will have to do a little bit of, of fill in order to get it above. The, well, they have to do it for the site, of course, honestly, okay. because the the site has some low areas. That they're they're going to get it for leveling anyways. They won't have to do much true elevating. Nope. And one of the things that was determined, and even FEMA seems to agree, is that this area. May or may not actually be a floodplain because the water actually drains to the north, not to the south. So it's something that FEMA is working on new flood maps, anyways, that we'll hopefully see last decade, probably in 2025. So it's, it's a long process, but this area could very well come to the So at any rate, they've gone through the process uh, to overcome the floodplain, and I don't see that as a huge issue. Um, Do they have they received this response from FEMA? Yeah, yes, they have. What was their response? That, that's exactly what they were. They are approved it conditionally until. Um, Is there any thought to mitigation regarding flooding from runoff? Once it's raised, we're going to have more runoff, run, more runoff to the neighbors. It should, if they grade it properly, it'll actually go towards the uh, the canal. But they will also be required to have some form of stormwater detention too. Okay. So that's part of any kind of project like this. So this is the this is the property as it looks today. This is from what we have named the William Lowe. Water, water stand in quite a bit of Kansas Avenue. Yeah, that'll they'll have to mitigate that. Make sure it, it doesn't get any worse. Anyways, this is looking off to the east. Um, of course, it goes into the roundabout area. They'll have to have their excess far enough back that it doesn't mess with that. We'll work with KDOT to make sure anything that they're doing excess wise, the fact they have to have a permit to do it from KDOT because it it's not actually on the highway, but it's affected that roundabout approach as part of KDOT's purview. So they'll have to go through that. Um, this is, of course, looking west. Um, the overpass is in the background. This is looking off to the south. Down it's J Street in that particular area. This is 
what's being called Williams White. However, it's not a developer today. So staff recommends that this request be approved. Uh, development appears compatible with the area. It's all there's no residential in this area. It's all some form of commercial in various different forms. The site is adjacent to a major highway that can handle the traffic that's going to be generated by this. Um, one of the things that was interesting when we were talking about the traffic study was that this won't necessarily generate any more truck traffic. It's it's just it, it's going to pull the traffic that's already on the bypass. Uh, that roundabout was proven to be designed for trucks, at least in Kayon's opinion, um, to handle that. There's some more there, but yeah. I'm only for the as far as the sewer, we're gonna to have to put in a new sewer line. So it's not gonna be a self consistent. No. Water, I guess I didn't talk about that either. Water, uh, there is water over to the side along Kansas Avenue. They can serve that. And as far as the other utilities, um, they were close enough that that's not gonna be a big deal. The biggest hurdle that they still need to do with is the approach. Uh, they'll have, probably end up having to have some sort of a, a right turn lane off of Kansas Avenue in order to get, get the trucks in there. We did look at the possibility of having an access off of, off of the bypass and that was denied by KOT. They felt it was too close to the roundabout to reflect it. To, so that was next. Um, but the developer was was okay with using Kansas as an access only. I think other than that, that's that's all I have. I'm open to any questions. Are we gonna try to keep a right away in case we ever do make Williams Way an actual road back to what we call that pond now? McFarland Pond. Yeah, well, we're going to keep a right away. We'll have to maintain that. We haven't defined exactly the property. In the document, it describes as a travel center. Um, is it going to be like a truck stop or is it going to have fuel? Yeah, the proposal is to be a, a traditional truck stop. I don't think they've come up with a brand or anything like that yet. Uh, but yeah, it's supposed to have a convenience store. In addition to all the, the truck facilities that we have that we have been built off the highway for 77. Nothing's been built yet. Nothing's been built yet. Big building can't move, build up for 80 years. It's not, not for this site. Josh, is there a concern that it might increase traffic on Kansas Avenue going west? And then up summit to Creekstone. Uh, is there anything to stop that? Not directly other than signage. Uh, however, obviously there'll be incurred truck traffic. Should I don't see why they would do that. Uh, however, you can't predict the behavior of truck drivers. So yes, there's a possibility of that. And ordinance is in place already. Yes. And we enforce it. So and you can go down H Street. They do they do not a turn. They do, but they do. So why we get a little more after them? Are the plans available? We do not have any plans. Um there was I did put there's something on the. I scroll it back up. Oh, you're done for me. <laughs> this is really the only plan that I have right now. Um, uh, I know that's probably sort of difficult to see on there. Um, but that red line there, that was the proposed sewer line across there. Blue is water, green is. Um, green is the force main that goes to country club estates. So that's. Not really an option for them to connect to. You already have the right away for that sewer line? No, I don't. It's not what we're going to. 
I got a question to ask. Why are we sent this letter for Forks Glen and all that? What's going to be done up there? You're, you got the letter for a different public hearing. You're supposed to be here tonight. Mm -hmm. No, 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 it's tonight. It's just not for this project. That's why. Let's see. It's It'll the be sign at the high school. Yeah. Who would approve the sixth hybrid budget to rezone this property? Uh, we have to do the public hearing first, but is there okay. anybody else that would like to speak to the closing of the hearing? I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Thank so, you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, we are out of the public hearing. Uh, we approve the rezoning of this property. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Josh, this is the roll call vote. Okay. Mary Benton? Yes. Joni Curl? Yes. Lloyd Colston? Yes. Andy Patton? Yes. Ian Coon? Yes. Okay, motion okay. passed. Thank you, guys. Item number three hold a public hearing to consider the advisability of rezoning 315 East Fillmore Avenue from a R1 low density residential district to a P public use district. That would do in our public hearing. But we go on to a public hearing. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh, same sign. Is there any public hearings? Josh, I will hand it back over to you. Okay. This uh, proposal is was filed by Cali College. It is for 315 East Fillmore. It's at the it's just an empty lot today at the corner of B and Fillmore. They actually own the property that's directly behind them as well, um, but they are not choosing to request a reason for that property today. Uh, surrounding area is residential and public. A ballpark is to the west and it's owned by the college as well. This particular property is pretty much a standard size, what we would have a residential lot. I believe there was a house on there. Uh, oh, it was demolished. I guess I would have. It was demolished in 1994. It was a dangerous structure that was demolished. And at some point, the college acquired the property. Um, Hoping to do basically what it is they're requesting to do today. They're wanting to expand um, some of the facilities. They had a master plan. This is kind of directly tied to that master plan, but it is it's part of their overarching plans for the area. They, of course, have the ballpark, they have the, the track and field complex, they have the Hafner Center, all that's right in this general area. Uh, and so the proposal here would be to rezone it from this R1 district to P public use. Um, what that does um, is allows them to, well, first of all, the use doesn't quite match up with their residential district. Uh, they're wanting to, uh, I said this bus barn is what they're wanting to put in there. Uh, that also helps them with setbacks, gives them a little more options. Um, going to the, I don't know what's wrong with this map. I must have messed something up. <laughs> Um, the area to the north was residential. Uh, you know what? I'll just pull my half up and try and analyze that. The area around it, um, to the south, to the east, to the north, is all residential according to the future land use plan or future land use map and the comprehensive plan. And then the, including this property, the development park, of course, was public. And it's zoned public. Uh, this does, we don't really have a goal that talks about public use, um, other than, of course, we want to support um, the college as much as we can whenever we can um, with their expansion, their different programs, because they're a partner of the city. Um, and that's what I mentioned. They're, the college itself is an economic development tool for the city. So this is the zoning for the area. Um, again, it's it's R1 for this property and properties in 
the general area. And again, the college owns that one is directly to the east and kind of it's a funny check property there. Uh, it's zone R2 to the north. Those properties are a bit denser. There's a number of those properties that are 25 foot lots. <laughs> so they had to they had to be worked or two. Um, and of course the ballpark is already public. So this would just kind of expand that public district a little bit to the east. Uh, this is of course the public use. It's owned by a public entity. Um, this is the property as it says today that mailbox interesting enough is for the house it's to the south. I talked to that uh, property owner and that was really his only concern was that they don't have any issues with the mailbox and they're able to keep it there or they can come up with a range of post office to the property. Property owner had no issue with the yeah, he was. I think his biggest concern there actually was security. They're having a lot of problems with that in the neighborhood. And so when I told him what it was for, he wasn't, I wouldn't say he was excited about the use, um, but it's something else in the neighborhood. But I'm sure they'll have more lighting that's within what's in that area. That's the way it may actually it's a potential help. Cali will control this too. And Cali would. Yeah, I'm sure they extra the too. Have problems. So. This is just look, this is the road. B Street is really just a gravel path there. I mean, it's it's not much to that road. It does serve that house and it curves back around to the track and field complex and the Happen Center. This is the neighborhood to the north against pretty small lots, uh, but it is it is a residential neighborhood, so there's it's something to consider about a project like this. And of course, the ballpark is off to the west of this property. The Beckley College has actually purchased at least one property along the north side of Fillmore in the block because of the effects of that ballpark. <clears throat> of course, the ballpark's been there for many years too. Uh, but it is the recommendation of staff to rezone it from R1 to P public. Um, it seems to be compatible with the area. I mean, there's little things that could be done to make sure that it doesn't become a nuisance to the neighborhood. Uh, the property has not been utilized for anything since 1994. So that's 27 years now that it just ends up there. Um, the college took over ownership until 2012. So even they have had it for the past nine years and not been safe. Again, it shouldn't adversely impact the neighborhood properties. Um, don't know exactly what all the college will be doing there, but obviously they'll be storing their equipment there. Um, but not, it should be a lot of traffic associated with this, uh, which also means that the public health and insects should not be impacted. The, as far as like utilities and stuff, that's all at the site already. Um, shouldn't have any big issue there. They may have to do something with sewer to extend across the street. But other than that, and there'll be a small view or so. Other than that, that road can handle the bus traffic that we'll be going to down that. Film. Okay. Yeah, film. And I, I'm guessing that the college already uses B a little bit uh, as a circulation. Yeah. Well, we're going to be at 40,000. As far as going to be any, they're getting some pretty big buses now. That's a good sign. Anybody else have any comments on this? I have a question. Absolutely. Um, are they going to use this at, as an opportunity to get some curb and gutter for like storm drainage and that kind of thing to work on some of? Uh, streets that are don't have it hasn't hasn't really come up on this project i haven't received any plans for what they're wanting to do yet but that's not kind of good so we're not currently have are we good but then for at least part i think Fillmore does along that stretch yeah it does but that's the 
think it is. Yes. Is there a drainage problem? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, nothing that's been brought to my attention. I know that some of B Street can get, especially towards the end of it, can be taken a lot. There's really just that one half still B Street, right? That part of B Street is much across the film. I'm surprised um, those buses actually set out in the weather behind the half inch center. So this is a good thing. They need some security. Avoid vandalism. Yes. It is a public investment. Yeah. Just keep maintaining the bus better inside. Those are expensive. Well, yes. 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 Doesn't seem like that long ago they had no buses. So now they've got a couple of tour buses. That's right. Where are they? Where are the buses parked? They parked them behind the half center between the tracks. That probably depends on whatever the particular athletic season is. That's where they are now. Okay, I will uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All those who have ever said aye. 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 Okay. Now I will entertain a motion to recommend the city commission to approve or disapprove the request to rezone 315 Fillmore Avenue. We approve the rezone. Thank you. Do have a second? I second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. Josh, we'll call it. I should have clarified something before I did this. Um, this, forget what I said. I'm talking about something totally different. Just ignore what I just said. Let's <laughs> break that for it. That will make more sense in a minute when I was right. <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> ahead. Okay, so you're ready for a roll call? Roll call, please. Okay, Mary Ben? Yes. Joni Kirk? Yes. Lloyd Colston? Yes. Andy Patton? Yes. Ian Cooten? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, now we'll entertain a motion to recess the Planning Commission. Or, no, I guess I need to recess this one first. So I will entertain a motion to recess the Planning Commission. Can we recess the Thank you. Do I have a second? second? Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, Sims aye. Okay, uh, now I can say what I was going to say yeah. before. Joni is not part of the Board of Zoning Appeals, so she will not be part of the discussion here and won't be able to vote on these items. Okay. Paisley would not be able to either if she was she's on the call. Right. But everybody else. Do we have a quorum? We do. We, we do. still have four people. Okay. Four people. Okay. <laughs> so we can continue. Who is the chair? The chair is not here. Okay. The chair is Charles Jennings, however, the vice chair is you. Oh, oh, okay. So I'm going to the lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Charles was the chair. I didn't realize I was the vice chair. Okay. So I will uh, uh, convene the Board of Zoning Appeals. And the first thing on the agenda is to elect a chair and a vice chair. <laughs> this is only for the remainder of this year. We have not met as a Board of Zoning Appeals. So Every year we're supposed to establish them. So okay. it could be the same people, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Let's move to reappoint the current uh, occupants of the chair. Thank you. Do I have a second? Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? I guess we need a roll call vote on this or can we voice with the voice vote? Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay. Moving on to number six. Uh, I will entertain a motion to hold a public hearing so the advisability of granting a variance for a sign to exceed the maximum allowed height by four feet six inches and exceed the maximum size by 26 square feet at 1200 West Radio Lake. Thank you. Do I have a second? Yeah. Thank you. All those who ever say aye, aye. Opposed, sign. You're in a public hearing. And Josh, it is all you. 
All right. Um, this is the request uh, filed by Jeff Herr. Sure. Sure. <laughs> About our architecture, no one mispronounced her name. Um, this is on behalf of the school district, however. Uh, but what they're doing is they are putting up a new sign that is a little bit larger than it's allowed for the public use district. Um, so the request is for you. This is at the high school. Um, the area surrounding this property is residential and commercial kind of mixed use. Uh, residential um, is off to the north, uh, which is why they would receive a letter. Um, what I did was I sent out when I, I sent out letters to everybody within 200 feet. Um, so this particular property is very large, um, and so it includes people that will probably never see the sign. So I'll just put that out there right now, but I, I did notify everybody that's in that area. I believe they said they were going to that. So that's, that, but that's why they were invited. Uh, the applicants are wanting to put a brand new sign that's a little more appealing than current one that's there, um, including one of those electric um, LED signs on it. Um, the regulations allow for a 10 foot tall sign and no more than 50 square feet. The proposal is to go up to 14 and a half feet um, and the area up to 76. So it's a little bit of an increase, um, but it's not a little big deal. This property, like I said, is a large property. It's actually 86 acres. Um, so it, it's quite expensive. In fact, my map didn't even show it. This property is, of course, been the high school. The high school has been there since the 1980s um, when it moved from downtown. Uh, there have been a number of expansions to the to the school, of course, including the football stadium and the tennis course that were done with the bond issue back in the 2008-2010 time frame. Um, but there haven't been any kind of cases or anything like that on that property since it's. Well, since it's been part of the city. I guess I should know too that at once upon a time that was supposed to be the expansion spot for the college. And they decided not to do that. I don't remember all, I don't know all the history that was before I was here. That, that was part of it. So I don't know. Um, compatibility with the neighborhood. The nearest house is about 250 feet away. Right now, it's sitting on property that's part of the Church of the Nazarene, and disclaimer, I do represent the Church of the Nazarene here. I'm not going to say anything beyond that. Um, the closest private residence um, is more than 300 feet away from the proposed sign. It's, it's actually behind the Rogers industry. So, that's a, so they're kind of, they won't even come see it. The sign is a significant distance away from the residence and most likely won't have any adverse impact on the based on what's proposed. Um, one of the other things we look at is the rights of the neighbors. Um, the applicant suggested that there wouldn't be any effect really at all. There's already a sign there. Um, so staff kind of agrees with that, although we would have to make sure that there was no oh the wrong thing on myself. Because it's within kind of 200 feet of the adjacent property to the south, that's zoned residential, because that's the way it's worded in the regulations. They would have to comply with the provision that that sign, the electronic part, the functioning part of it, be turned off between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. If I determine that it's a little further than 200, because it's really close, I don't mind about that. But for now, that's officially the recommendation. What is the sign supposed to say? Well, it'll just say whatever their activities are. Oh, okay. That's what they, they've been wanting that for a long time to be able to sort of change the screen. <laughs> there are some regulations that can't be old video, it needs to be um, some sort of transition that's a little slower. And that's it. We really super flashy in that neighborhood. Um, hard to, kind of hard to say. However, um, one of the things that was pointed out by the applicant is that 
this is such a large property has a really significant French. Uh, there's no there's no a lot of houses in that real close vicinity. Of course, there is a, a couple along the south side. Um, the Circle Drive neighborhood, of course, is behind there, but they're not going to go see that sign. Uh, that's the maybe it's where it happened. <laughs> Um, but part of the reasoning behind that, and Jeff kind of brought that up when he was doing the, the write-up on that, is that typically when you're driving, you need a certain amount of time to be able to read a sign. There's going to be a lot of stuff that comes up on that sign. And if the sign is too small, it becomes more difficult to read in a quick period. Um, that's a typical argument for making this any sign anywhere a little bit larger is because of the speed limit. Um, and of course, yes, during school, you, you have a lower speed limit, but most of the time, the school zone is not in effect. So um, the speed limit is actually 30 miles an hour from there. Uh, of course, you do got to make sure that it doesn't have any ill effects on the neighbors. Um, at the same time, we got to make sure that it doesn't. By the same token, we're going to make sure it doesn't flow the traffic so much that people are reading the sign and forgetting where they're at. Um, and there are I think we have. What, uh, what time does folks set the noise down over to school? <laughs> now that's a whole different argument. <laughs> um, I kind of got in this traffic hazard. There's no traffic signals. There are school zone signals in there, so we're going to make sure we don't uh, have any issues there, but it's going to be in the school's best interest to make sure we're not doing something that would confuse people. But I don't see that as being an issue. Uh, is there the, the new crosswalk that's been put in there? Is there still talk about putting in a you know, traffic control for that crosswalk? Which is fairly close to that sign. Oh, the school district talked about requesting that separate late today. Maybe like a, 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 you know, this is, because those, those two signs will end up being This is looking west along radio lane. This is this is the diagram of what the sign looks like. Uh, now I'll have another one at the end that shows a little bit. This will be a really attractive sign on this is my personal thing. Um, is this in line with the comprehensive plan and zoning regulations? Uh, again, it goes back to that argument that the traffic that goes in front of the school is actually sort of what you would see in front of a commercial business. So that's part of the argument for wanting a little bit bigger sign. Um, and I said, while it's true that traffic generated the last close assembly without a commercial business, we, we write the regulations to protect the neighborhood that's in. That's why those regulations are the way they are. Um, but for institutional uses like a school, they then do certain signage. Um, but again, due to the distance that from from any adjacent houses, because that's going to be the one's primary concern about this, I don't feel that's going to be a huge issue to. The thing is, the sign, the flashing part of it would be allowed in this event, according to regulations. What they're wanting to do is make it a little bit bigger. So, as far as that's concerned, the granting of variance is going to be contrary to. The intent that was put out there for. Have you had any feedback from neighbors? I have not had any. So, so the intent of making it bigger was to make it more visible. Mm -hmm. So I kind of said this before, um, but the proposed height is 14 foot 6 inches tall, which is 10 feet tall. Now. So the variance would need to be 14 feet. 2 inches or 6 inches? I must, that must be a typo. Um, the remote sign is 76 square feet, which is 26. I did the math right there. <laughs> um, 
that's requested. You get it right on our packet. The, the motion and everything is correct. So that's not the easiest to see in the world. Um, so I'm just going to point it out with this. This is about where the sign today, the current sign is, and so it's just going to be a little offset. Um, this is the church's parsonage. It's the closest, it's about 250 feet away. This, let's say 150, what's that distance? Probably. It's under 200 feet. We'll just leave it there. <laughs> so that's that property line is, is what's making the flip to have the requirement to be shut off at night. And in fact, the other house is far enough that it's not even on this particular image. This is Roger's industry right there. This is, of course, is what the current sign looks like today. It is lit, of course, but it does not have the, the electronic part. This is looking off to the south and east. Just a bunch of trees. That circle drive is what's behind there. Um, this is this is the, the house to the south that's on the church property. This is another image just looking west. Uh, the first office is there. The house is right. Jack and King, I say it's back in here behind the streets there. So would it be possible just to change the regulations instead of granting permission to one individual at a time? It's not looking like I mean, we don't want to show preferential treatment or change the regulations. We've, we've taken that. We get a variance to everyone that's come. Exactly. We, we are <laughs> needing to look at the sign right there to change. It's it'll be something that we we look at probably next year after we finish up the conference planning process. I've got a whole list of stuff for that. So clear here's the, the expert. No car is a little too small our regulation. Um, I just think it's interesting that uh, the fine regulations are tied to property use, not necessarily to the street and what's around it a little bit. Um, I'm not for sure if I can speak to how it's done in other ones, but you know, because it's such a large property and the traffic flows when you're having football games, the basketball games, um, it's kind of our argument that like we like a larger sign. In addition to that, um, you know, the board is really behind this, the school board is really behind this, and they want to point out that you know they're also a uh, community uh, rescue or emergency location, so. To be able to have better signage in those emergency situations as well. Well, signs have changed from you know, LED signs. I know they come in specific sizes, so we should look at adapt the regulations to allow the new technology. That's what I agree. So, okay. So, the recommendation is to go ahead and approve it. And the one of the keys that I know too is it's not excessively detailed regulations. Um, I didn't really say that before, but it, it, it's a fairly small change. In fact, I don't even know if the casual viewer would even notice the difference between the, what's allowed and what they're going to have. To be completely honest with you, unlikely. Yeah, so it's just a and it, that's that's what the the mock-up of the sign is. And so that's the other key is that this is the tool district uh, wanted it to be very attractive. And so even if it had to be a smaller sign, it was still be a very attractive sign for that area. And it, again, in my opinion, is an improvement over what's already there. Um, I don't feel that this sign will adversely affect the neighborhood at this new size. Just like I said, it, it's not a huge change. The distance to the nearest house, uh, house itself is about 250 feet. Uh, and actually, there's some trees and stuff there today that would probably uh, keep you from saying it. Uh, it shouldn't interfere with traffic control, other than what we talked about briefly there. And other than what Ian was just talking about, it doesn't really affect the general spirit of the regulations. Okay. Four guys testified there and changed the word. 
Unless there's anybody else in the public that would like to speak on this, uh, I'll entertain a motion to close the public here. I'll just say one, one more thing. Uh, uh, Josh alluded to, but I'll just specifically point out is so for public um, occupants or your public uh, uses, it's the 10 foot minimum and then the 15 square feet. But if it was classified as the C2 or C3, the size of the people is fine. So if it's when he's saying it's a small increase, it's still within a regulation, just not the same use rate regulation that the drivers already have. So, okay. um, so anything along North Summit would have that C3 kind of occupancy. It would be so That's we're still conforming with the map, but just not within a public use. So that's interesting. We have a different size of square. Thank you. Um, thank you. I have a second. Second. Thank you. All of the members say aye. Aye. Opposed. Same sign. Okay. I will uh, entertain a motion to approve or disapprove a variance to allow a sign to exceed the maximum on that height by four feet six inches and exceed the maximum size by twenty six square feet at twelve hundred West Radio Lane. Move to approve the variance. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? Like I said, we should look at it. Agreed. Absolutely. When we get to that point, let's definitely look at doing that. Roll call vote, Josh. Mary Benton. Yes. Lloyd Colston. Yes. Andy Patton. Yes. Ian Koo. Yes. Now, I will entertain a motion to adjourn the Board of Zoning Appeals. Thank Second. you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. This time, I will reconvene the Planning Commission. Just restart our discussion of parks and recreation. Hand it back over to you, Josh. Main thing I wanted to cover tonight, well, two things. Um, and that is kind of to wrap up the discussion of parks and rec. Um, part of that, I'd like to look at some potential goals, um, some and measurable goals like we've been talking about. But also the second item that's in here is the Harris Park Pool Study. Um, that was something that was just recently um, looked at by the city commission too and so they're, they're starting kind of a, a public input period it's not something they're going to do lightly um, but we also have uh, that davidson with the rec center too you oversee the facility the rec center manages under contract with the city so she can probably help you answer any questions that you might have about this particular plan. Um, I've read through the plan. Um, basically, what it comes down to is that the pool is in desperate need of some sort of repair or replacement, one way or the other. Um, and it's a lot of different things have to go into that. Biggest is the price tag. Biggest is what? The price tag to fix the problems. Yeah, it's all the problems. Both, yeah. Always. Both to make all the repairs that, that, that the consultant came up with and the proposal to basically start from scratch are in the $6 million range. So it's something that the city is going to have to really look at and um, a serious look at how we feel about our pool. Is there any grants available to make a map around? Not that I've found yet. Are there are there any grants? grants there, there, are, there, well, there was a community development block grant uh, a couple years ago with a million dollars in the cap. And that's been used there and gone through a recent well, I think I know the number of this that this community would have bought by the side of the budget. Well, I saw it on the pool when I was a kid. I think it's a highlight of the neighborhood. 
I think it's a huge fundraiser as well. I think we'll see the citizens probably pitch in on, on something like this. Yeah, I'm going to be the one to do it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, you had a lot of input as they put this process together. Um, I'm a third generation from this community and a lifer, and I say I either have the saddest life or the most blessed, and I like to think it's the most blessed because I my first job was at this school when I was 12 years old, and I'm still working there. Um, but one of the things, um, I'm going to be honest, I um, when I they came down and did the evaluation and the walkthrough and then this document came out, I was in tears. It was like attacking my firstborn child. And I'm like, it's not that bad, but I mean, on a daily basis, um, you know, our kind of routine is to be sawing out pipes and putting in pipes. And I've learned in 23 years way more about plumbing than I ever wanted to know. But um, when, you know, the possibility, and, and I'm a realist, I've been doing the aquatics industry professionally for about 20 plus years and um, many times the cost to uh, replace something becomes a lot more money than or to repair something a lot more money than to replace it. However, um, we now officially um, are the largest pool in the state of Kansas and now I think this town's kind of um, rich in those kind of traditions. And so when I started speaking with um, Andy at, um, how they pronounce? Lamp? Brian Bryderson. It was something else. They, they just changed. So I know it as something else, but Lark, it used to be Larkin Aquatics. And Andy and I worked together on some other things. But I said, I don't want to give up this big pool, I don't want to see it chopped into little bitty um, kitty pools. And they all kind of laughed at me. Um, and he came up with three or four different um, plans that we looked at. And um, Randy and um, Tony Tapia and I think Andrew set on, in on it. And, um, you know, the integrity is going to change a little, but it's still going to, um, can I point out something? Yeah. There's that okay? Yeah. All right, sorry. If anybody knows me, I'm just gonna take over. So. This right here is actually the shape of the pool, which surprises a lot of people. They think it's like all kinds of different shapes, but this right here is where we're at now. And, Two or three of the plans had an area over here, an area over here, an area over here. And if you're familiar with some of the surrounding communities, like Winfield did some things, um, the Garden City did some things, they chopped them into little areas. Um, one, it's very expensive to maintain that super bias, um, supervision-wise. And two, I think for what we're all about with our big one body of water pool, all went away. So he, um, Andy did a great job. And so all of the water areas are connected. This would be a, um, a six lane, 25 meter, which is, is gonna qualify like, a lot of people were like, well, could we host swim meets and stuff? Um, swim meets have to grow up through your athletic department and, um, be embraced by that before you really start running swim meets. But this would be a short course so we could hold. Um, obviously, our community is probably not going to do Olympic trials or things like that nature. It would be more an inner city league or a county league or something. But that's that's what this, so you, you have deep water here and then this would be a lazy river and this would be, um, this would be a body of water that would have two zero depth ent entries. If you don't know what that is, it's like a beach. And this now, the zero depth entry that we have now is probably one of the, I would say biggest areas that people 
kind of come to um, the mamas, the dads, the families, the littler kids enjoy that gradual. Who was that, that with the with the zero depth now, it was done in eighty five, I think. Is eighty five to the document. Right. Um, and then this would be um, two water slides. Um, in a couple of the plans that they kind of threw out to us, there were a lot of uh, what I call trendy things. Um, for instance, there was a play area that was sort of like it, it really, they, they call it no depth water. The water depth would have only been two or three inches. And it was sort of like a little, I call it an ant farm. And the kids could move levers and stop the water and whatever. And, you know, I think that those are great things, but I think they have a very short trend life. Plus, they have a lot of mechanical things that can go wrong. So when, you know, I talked with Andy and we all sat down, one of my concerns was something that um, this community could invest in and get a lot of years out of. It wouldn't be like a real um, short-lived trend thing and then we'd be back here asking, you know, the citizens, well, you know, this is old news now and, um, you know, we want to do something else. And I think that they um, did a great job with, you know, what they can. You know, that's, that's been asked. Um, a lot of the problems in with like renovating down there, and I think your company has helped the city out with this, but uh, for instance, the main drain that goes back to um, the circulation pump, the pipe is a 12 inch pipe and the pipe itself was uh, cast iron and is completely gone. And what the pipe now is, is what the chemicals have calcified to make a pipe, you know. Well, they have and, a strict regulation. Right. Have you, how many, you have one, one price for one project? So this, this is one. conceptual at this point. Yeah. So we're just beginning. We have like a budget set or evaluation of the current soil conditions and, and then a, a snapshot of what it would cost to fix what we have and then um, a, a concept of a, of a similar price to be there. So I mean, it's still really, really high level stuff. It's the beginning of the conversation. So, conversation started. What, what kind of, other than that main drain, what kind of, Issues. Yeah. Well, the so I, I would say, um, you know, a lot of things are original. The entire circulation system around the deck is original to it. The, the, the structure, the pool bottom has been, I believe that was 2002, came up and went down. The, the walls are original and we do fight, you know, some crumbling repair. Um, some of the things that um, I know that Mr. Smith brought up, and he did at um, a meeting we, we had on site, was um, the way we're set up um, down there is the skim gutters, the water that goes over into the gutters around the pool, um, and this was traditional to the time period when the pool was built. Mm -hmm. It goes to wastewater, oh, where it's not, it's not it's not recirculated. Yeah, it so water, when it goes to stormwater, yes, it goes to not sewer to stormwater. Chlorination. It goes to stormwater. So when you know that there's been a lot of like figures thrown out over kind of publicly about the amount of water that the pool leaks, well. When you take into consideration all of that that's being splashed over when people are in it or skimmed over, you it's know, not, it's, not it's not really, that's not really leaking. Now, you know, the pool bottom has some large cracks that there, there's leakage, but not to what, you know, that. Um, the other thing is the ADA compliance. There are 
you know, there are some, and they're they're not major, like to be fined issues to be cited for, but they're definitely things that have been brought, you know, to the attention. Yeah, the ADA regulations for schools they were real strict and kind of downgraded. So. Well, in the state of Kansas, there really aren't any codes, state codes, to related to swimming pools. It's yeah, it is. no enforcement. Oh, no. that jumped out to me. But yeah, he there's, said Tuesday. there's no, we could have a swamp out there, and as long as the city yeah. put their blessing on it, I mean, I wouldn't be your director. There are, um, a few years back, uh, the CDC worked with the aquatics industry, and they put out what's called the Mod Model Aquatic Health Code, and it's simply, um, they took all the health codes for pools in the United States and they kind of created a um, suggestion of this ought to be your minimums. And I try to, when I make decisions about things and the, the sanitation levels and the safety concerns and, and the training, I kind of go with at least the minimum of Texas and California because they're some of the strongest state statues um, but one of the things that uh, we talked about <laughs> is that because of the nature the age of a lot of the equipment if one thing goes down there's no way to get those replacement parts we had a um, a motor go out um, two years ago and they actually had to fly in parts from California, South Texas, and the East Coast to Kansas City to fabricate something to, you know, that would get us back running till we could get an original set. So I think that's kind of where we're at with the whole thing is that we're looking at are we willing to wait as a community? Till the whole bottom falls out, and then we have to scramble to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? Because, you know, if something as simple as one of those lines completely sever, or um, one of the filters, you know, go down to where it can't be repaired, we're looking at a community that doesn't have a pool this summer. And he said that if we plan this correctly, we can do this without missing a summer. We can. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. I mean, we get this done nine months. Funding is a lot of issue, but I think, I think uh, that's a staple of this town, probably the citizens to chip in, make some fundraisers, and some personal donation. I think we should be pretty close. Oh, speculation. The one I think that he said Tuesday that kind of you know a little bit was that, that zero inch portion of the path. He said that's a safety concern because it's too steep. And she said it's one of the most popular features at our pool. Everybody is looking at the part that's too steep for anybody's information. It's, it's too steep. Well, it's not that dangerous, but it's just you know. Yeah. I, I do have to say that. What's your um, attendance like? That's that's what I wanted to talk about. Our attendance is about. Um, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest. I have sort of a captive audience with IYQ Camp being across the street yes. four days a week, yes. and because we take um, about 200 people over there every day. Um, besides <laughs> that, we see anywhere from two to three hundred people a day. Um, what's been really interesting to me is the last oh, two to four years, we're seeing more and more people from um, Blackwell, Ponca, Newkirk, the Oklahoma areas. Um, we're still pulling, um, you know, some from the Winfield area just because we have a larger body yeah, of water. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you. I thought when the water park went in that the whole bottom would fall out of things, and we're we're two different things. That's a um, commercial and a tourist attraction. 
that has a very limited um, usage because, in essence, you have to stay there to use the water park. So you get two to three hundred people a day. That's a lot. That's really good. And I appreciate your experience. And I mean, I know from firsthand because my daughter worked for you so many years. I know the love that you put into it and the way, you know, that that it, you feel about that. And it's, it's I, I love the history of it. I'm still sad that all the bleachers are gone mm -hmm. and you can't drive around it. But the history, and I spent every day there as a child. I mean, we were at school from one to nine, um, you know, because the hours were longer. So I, I kind of think that the community should gather around and rally and, and do something. I think that, I think it'll breathe, breathe more life into it and, and even more people will come. I agree. So. Neat thing too is that gives them an opportunity to look at a design like this and say, I like it. Yeah. I see a lot of private donations. When we employ in the summer, um, just that facility alone employs about between 45 and 50 part-time employees from the age of 14 to, I'm really old. Is there any rich guys that swim? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask you what you were authorized to write that check. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, you obviously Bill don't Gates have to like, what? No. Yeah. Uh, I have a granddaughter of this work there in well, eight or nine years. She's, She's there right now. <laughs> She's still working down there, plus another dog. Yeah, I think this is up for that pool. Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah. I think it's, it's a well, great area. Um, you know, it's a great area. I, I know that there was, you know, some talk about do we leave it at that location if we completely rebuild it? Um, just my recommendation personally would be yes, because it's it's yeah. not residential. I, I mean, agree. there's plenty of parking. There's no, the noise is not, you know, deterrent to any houses around it. Um, How much is the original structure? Well, that is not enough that would be to be all the development. It would be nice to leave, you know, some of the original structures, nostalgia, and whatever. But I, I don't have any clue what the feasibility is. But we, we've talked about uh, if this uh, board, we've talked about the Lincoln Brick, so near this. Right. And I, I can totally see leaving that front facade. I don't know if that's even possible, but then having all of the stuff that's in that yes. as part of the new record building that's right next to this. And there you get this front facade that all the old time you can look at it and go, oh yeah, I remember I was a kid. Everything behind it's new. Like a virtual mind. Yeah, just, just the outside facade. I, I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know about construction, they can tear everything out and no, keep didn't. that front. Yeah, so at least it still looks like it, then the entrance would be. And we, we talked at the with um, with Andy about the bathhouse, you know, and when we really got kind of deep down into it, and, and Randy stepping in, you know, because I know that you talked to him a lot too, but um, and and that was one of my oh my gosh, you know, we're still hearing about the bleachers coming down, <laughs> and I, I had to laugh when you were talking about the high school because people still call the high school the new, new high school, school, and it was built in 1980. You know, yeah. so we still, you know, they talk about the bleachers. I thought if we take down this bathhouse, you know, I I won't even be able to live in this, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know that I wanted my name tagged to that, you know, but when we really <laughs> When we really got into, and you can see in the packet of the pictures, the integrity of the foundation and things are such that I, I think that it's just going to be, and, and we may be able to do something, you know, like you said, like a front facade, but to restore the bathhouse, there were so many 
ADA non-compliances and drainage compliant, you know, drainage uh, problems and those kind of things that you would be spending a lot more dollars trying to keep something that was never really going to be what you, need, what you really need. Right. So. Was saying, just, the wall. Right. <laughs> just, just the front wall. Just the front wall. That's my wall. Just the front wall. Get all the back stuff. Yeah. The new red building is right next to it. That's mine. Well, and, and you know, when I hired on, I really had no idea that by this time I would know that you had to have so many bathroom stalls for so many gallons of water or square feet of water. So those are all things that are not going to fit, you know, in. So it's going to be you sort of like you. Not once we start this conversation. Now, once you start with this, you lose all that. It's not. Okay. It's certainly eligible. Right. To be honest, but it so is we not. don't have to fight with that red tape. However, if we did have to fight that red tape, there would have been options for tax credits and stuff. But I don't know what they would do with a case like this because of the amount of work that has to be done to it. So that might still not work. You might not be able to even up with the building to When so we took the deck up in, in 2002, this, uh, it's this is right in front of the slides there. When we took that whole pool bottom, up, um, it just kept getting like deeper. And I mean, there was a cavern below it that we had to bring in truckloads and truckloads and truckloads of bedrock even to be able to put you know a concrete slab back in so um I, i'm going to say i was on the fence like oh i don't want something new because this is my first love but i am a realist to know that there's so much unknown with renovating that that the price tag for trying to repair and renovate could get yeah, this well, you are a wealth of knowledge. We appreciate that, Debbie. So uh, I think. Well, we all got to recognize too that she's a really, one of the big reasons that the pool of that age is still out. There. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I know. Between her and, and Tony, the, the, that's why this looks as good as it does. I know. Like, they have covered over a lot of. The issues kept running and made it look pretty nice. Yeah. And then you really start looking closely. And then you go, oh, man. Yeah. 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 The things I stand in front of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the dirty chair gets knocked. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, very good. Thank you for that presentation. Really, one of the goals should have something to do with the renovation. Uh, yes, it, it needs to have uh, be more of that. What else do you want to discuss in this part of the package, Josh? Well, just 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 that, just the goals. Okay. So we've heard we heard about the pool. We heard quite a bit from Landon last month too. Um, about some of their needs. Um, I know the beautification board has been looking at every single one of the parts of Harrison's on that board too. So you might be helpful with that too. Um, but it's something that we we got to figure out what we want to do uh, with the parks. We just got to figure out what we want to do with the facilities. And then Is there anything that we heard maybe in the last several meetings that was a particular concern? Focus on the dollars. <laughs> yeah, we got to figure out how to pay for all this. Yes. <laughs> I, think, you know, I, I think one of the goals needs to be to turn that whole area into kind of a hub for recreation. So maybe like a master plan for Paris Park? Absolutely. Uh, it's just a perfectly positioned for that. 
the space that is around this, um, you know, the, the aquamarine is there. And such a nice big park and the pool right there and then open space. I mean, it, I, I think that needs to be one of the goals. That's trails. But the, yeah, the trail is going to be there. Uh, I mean, it's just, yeah, I think we need to develop that plan for this whole area to figure out how to do it. How to pay for it. I don't know if you've talked I, even loosely about an overall parks plan up here, but uh, it might be easier to do park by park. And some of the little parks, don't need a whole lot of detail. I think Wilson and Paris are your two big ones. We already have a master plan for Wilson. So yeah, that's why they do Paris. The, uh, what we're working on with communication more, which Candace is on as well, is these very generic, nice sounding goals aren't too useful. It's one size fits all. And they give us no guidance on which smaller park should be specialized. So we're looking at the park, we're going to do the park next week. We got about three or four more on the list. And then it's going to take the rest of this year, probably. But as Josh and I discussed, we're not going to do the time plan by the end of this year. Like we did in the it's just not feasible. Um, so we'll try to get that wrapped up and refer to you guys to then evaluate. But we'd like to go park by park, or at least classification levels of parks. And as you've said, we'd like to see timelines and specificity. I think we can offer that. We've already talked about a variety of enhancements for some of the sites, some of which is already in progress, some of which isn't. But you mentioned dollars. I mean, a good example, we had to take the restrooms out of next year's budget again for Lovey Watson and Bergen Park to just keep getting kicked down online because there was only so many dollars to go around. So right. that's something we need too is to try those. It's difficult to try to establish some sort of a dedicated Absolutely. That, 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 is a, that is a achievable goal that you can put in for this. Something that, you know. I'm meeting with um, Landon tomorrow. So we had kind of a clash at the last meeting. So um, I'm going to see if he and I can kind of work things out, get on the same page. I think it would be a, a big benefit if the um, groups could work together and kind of cohesal a little bit. Work out some of the details. I'd like to ask you guys about this one. It's been talked about a lot. It's something we've looked at in multiple years. The Capital Improvement Plan Committee, Gary Hale, is a real passionate um, voice for this, but there's a lot of cost involved. So he talked about Williams Way. Um, you've got a low water crossing structure and over the canal. Once you reopen the front pond, we instantly have to do all the ADA improvements that are not present. At this point, it's so overgrown and unutilized that I think there'll be a significant amount of site clearing development that needs to occur to make that a suitable recreation area. Is this, yeah. Is yeah. this something that you guys see as, a, as a, something we need to keep in play as a priority in the next 10 years? I, I do not. We have plenty of recreation activities like that now. I mean, it would be a nice area, and it, it would. It would. They got a lot of fish, I'm sure, on there, yeah. there, but it's. We've got veterans lake, we've got new Vermont, but it's it's another thing to maintain. It's the expense of getting to it, first of all. You know, I think one of the things we always talk about with this truck stop development is if, if something was gonna come in, then maybe we'd try to utilize that as a way to yeah. get the structure done. I don't know if that's still the conversation or not, but it's not something we should uh, insist it's on. It's something to be asked. Yeah. But uh, you don't want to respond to the problem. I mean, and I've worked at Veterans Lake, you know, they've yeah. the restrooms and paved the trail. Right. So it's a possibility, I don't know, really. Right. But as far as it getting funded out of yeah. city budget, no. Yeah. It's been kicked out every year. It was yeah. one of the lowest scoring projects in the CIP process. Yeah. And until that piece comes in, the rest of it doesn't come in. So, I mean, we can keep it out there as a 10 year thing, like you talked about, but I just, I, I wanted to hear you. There's a small group of people that are very vocal about that project. That, it, that's my opinion. That's a small group, but they're very vocal about that. I just, the cost benefit isn't there, in my opinion, at all. This is, is what's the legality of access to the park? You actually cannot fish in it, which I did not know until I asked Tony. It's well, been taken off to the official list with the state and they don't stock it. Could it be like an interagional bridge for those people? You know, and that's kind of what I was thinking. We could tell people that, you know, because you got to sort of walk in there, you certainly can't. Off from the bypass. It is technically, I mean, it's public property, we own it, the city owns it, but there's serious safety concerns. 
Um, it could probably be improved a little bit. Like somebody still got the canal access problem because of them taking out the crossing or radio line. And yeah, honestly, that section of radio is not a good condition. It's, I wouldn't drive in there in a full of our vehicle. That's just me. We've got a farmer that goes over that to the Haiti area, but that's about it. Some city vehicle. Is there price to be a cost? I don't know if anyone looked at it. That's yeah, it's a possibility. <coughs> yeah, I, well, last time they did the dig over there was that four years ago. I, I helped her to get back and forth, and it was challenging to get a big truck. I only ask because it's literally the only goal <laughs> under natural resources. I don't know what you guys would want to, if we want to keep that goal in there, if we want to look at I mean, a lot of the natural resources in this chapter are not under our control. Kyle Wildlife Area, Chapter Major Center, the uh, Camp Rice. And the only thing we really control is Chestnut Park, which even that is kind of in conjunction with uh, Wildscape Foundation, Park River Trail, um, I guess Walnut Park, if you count it. Um, Neva Pond and the McFarland area looks not accessible. They don't all have to have it. We're not going to go after it. It doesn't have to have it. Well, the point of natural areas is they're natural. Right. Yeah, maybe that maybe the fact is nothing. Right, exactly. I mean, the rivers themselves ultimately. We don't have something good to do with it. They don't all have to have a goal. We've got obligations to the butterflies, too. Well, and then, yeah, that's some stuff we'll work into but I guess the, the way the staff approaches is to develop the river access but not you know like over the top so Chestnut Park's not something you want to just commercialize it it's okay you know it's kind of you know, like, um, that's kind of some of the guidance I think we're looking for but I don't have much else there and then on the historic stuff well obviously this is our big week for this history of the city um, one cool thing that just got done, I don't have a copy, I give my only one to my wife can help design it, but we'll have a bunch from tomorrow. If you come downtown, the historic board will be passing out the new brochure. It's 44 pages, there's a lot of information that you maybe haven't seen before. So one of the things we'll do is go back and update the listing because the dates are all completely wrong for all those buildings we found. Uh, of course. So clean that up. And but we, you know, that board will have some input on the goals for the historic district and that sort of thing. But it ties back into the economic development stuff that we've discussed. Um, we'll know more after the high end meeting, hopefully, on that. Uh, but I don't know if you guys had any input on this section. Um, I mean, in general, we're going to try to save these buildings, but also try to balance finding uses for them that makes them viable for the owners. So I think when we were discussing economic development, too, somebody mentioned uh, my notes from that chapter. Fixing up like X number of buildings by, by something like that. Right. So we've we've actually talked about it a little bit. But I don't, I think what we'll probably end up doing is we'll ask that the start preparation board and Charles is actually a liaison to that board so he's on the board. So ask them to get some in, give some input for it. And of course the planning commission determine who actually will actually be in there. Right. Um, but I think that would be good. The same, same thing with the, the beautification board providing the stuff parks. I think it's good that we have these other boards that are signed. With the, sure. Uh, uh, by the way, Charles is not here tonight because he's at USD 470 strategic planning session. So everyone's doing their planning right now. Yeah. Um, let's see what they come up with, but we need to look, you know, what incorporate that and I think stuff. So um, so that was really all I had on this. We've been talking about parks and stuff now, maybe, so it's time to move on. I, one question I had is where we want to go next. Um, the original schedule had us progressing chronologically through the book. The next one was chronologically, it's transportation. Transportation, which that's fine because Friday we're kicking off the transportation plan. So if you guys want to get into that, but um, if you can delay it, month or two we might have more things to go over there's some stuff that the state's doing that's not going to drop until probably august and the deliverable set from trans systems is end of august for the first batch september is when we would have been talking public health 
originally, but we can move that up. Yeah, let's do that. Do something yeah, I think they'll want us to because they're right in the middle of the community health assessment update, and I think they will want me some feedback sooner rather than later. So we can switch them in. Yeah, and then we'll do transportation. Yeah. Yeah. That works. Kind of like what we did with the, the housing assessment. If you don't mind walking around, I just I think that approach would work. As long as you keep us straight, we're going. And those are the two big sections remaining. After that, it's all land use and getting into the nitty gritty of planning and zoning. But obviously, we're still working on chapter drafts. We are behind on surveying on these topics. Yep. Um, to be honest, the next survey will probably be about the pool. And then we'll probably segue into the other parks and facilities from there. Um, so, speaking of the pool, is there anything you guys specifically want to hear from the public as we design that? Um, and it's wide open. Do we want to ask them new versus rebuild? I mean, do you want to narrow the scope? Do you want to ask about what amenities I'd like to see added? That kind of some, some general guidance as we work with our own commission, the city commission. How, how did, I'm sorry, I haven't been here. Um, it was flash voting. How, how did that turn out? I haven't been getting as much participation as I'd like. We're getting around 120. Uh, we haven't done one in a little bit, so we need to get one to the back soon. I have started doing one more outreach. Um, I'm going to start getting some more social media stuff going. And once this week is over, I, we are going to do a blast. We've got a database of cell phone numbers in the area that we can try to send out some solicitation to invest in. We would like to get that bring up close to like 500 people. Um, so it's going to, we can't, we'll do flash drill, but we've talked about having paper surveys in person at the pool. We're going to do some town hall meetings. So this is going to have to be, and the same thing with the transportation plan. We can't rely on this one enough that we're going to have to do a bunch of different things. They have to have a town hall meeting. Yeah. Like to, uh, transportation, you can count on a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> They'll be later in the year, fall, winter. But, you know, I think like we talked about, let's work with the flash water pack. And I already, I reached out to him asking, what have you done for the community's specific pools? Yeah. He's done a couple of examples, um, but I'm waiting to hear more from the commission before we can develop it. Yeah. He's the expert. Um, Surveys. Yeah. To be. And Andy Smith, they do a lot of that with community. Oh, they, they do that as well? Yeah. So there's, survey there's, some, there's some uh, well, yeah. resources there as well. Can't talk, can't talk to Andy. For engineer, you seem pretty sharp. There's no engineers in there. <laughs> I think, as far as input from the public, from this, uh, they're not. Participating. It might so maybe it's a little waste of time, but I think any improvements, you know, like to the pool, I think they can explore to everybody. Yeah. The pool in particular has got to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You yes. probably have name lists and stuff because of all those families that register for the summer programs and stuff. So we probably could get information directly. Well, and one thing that I kind of threw out there is um, with the pool and, and using the public input, we really are kind of in a timely, a time crunch because yes. if you wait to ask people about their passion about that pool in December, yeah. it's going to be low, pretty low on the priority. Right. Scale. Yeah. Yeah. They're so, so, yeah. They're still fresh. Well, they're still tipping the pool. And the way that the economy is going with building prices alone, the longer you wait, the more you're going to spend. And we're already coming oh. over six million dollars. Construction, yeah. Construction costs have gone down um, as the factories start ramping back up. I mean, the price of lumber has already gone down. Like, Yes, so that's total for a place. Yeah, it's not going to go back to where it was, but it's true. I mean, right now we're kind of at the peak of construction costs. So. Anything else? Mm -hmm. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move it. Thank you. Do have a second? Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. 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 Th